Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, when the day came for them to be purified, as laid down by the Lord of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Observing what stands written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male must be consecrated to the Lord and also to offer in sacrifice in accordance with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now in Jerusalem there was a man called Simeon. He was an upright and devout man. He looked forward to Israel's comforting and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death until he had set his eyes on the Christ of the Lord. Prompted by the Spirit, he came to the temple and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the law required, he took him into his arms and blessed God and is said, now, Master, you can let your servant go in peace, just as you promised, because my eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared for all the nations to see, a light to enlighten the pagans and the glory of your people Israel. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. In today's celebration, the readings present us with a double celebration. First of all, the celebration of our Jewish inheritance, what we have received from the Jewish religion. And secondly, it's the last remnant of the Christmas season. So let us look at this Jewish inheritance. We're told in the Old Testament that God said to Moses, Consecrate to me every firstborn. The first son to leave the womb is mine. Now that was in memory of the freedom of the Israelites from slavery in Egypt when the Lord slew all the firstborn of the Egyptians but the firstborn of the Israelites was left unharmed and therefore that wonderful event was commemorated in the Jewish law enshrined in the Jewish law so that 40 days after the birth of the firstborn son, he was to be presented in the temple to the Lord his God. And in addition, the mother of the child who accompanied him was purified legally, ritually, and that was done by the offering of a turtle dove and in addition to thank God for a safe delivery, she also offered a second turtle dove. So in the Jewish ritual, there were two separate and wonderful feasts. First, the presentation of the child. And secondly, the purification of the mother. Now, I see some people here who are not so young. They may remember that in 19, up to 1967, 
Today's feast was a feast of the purification of our Blessed Lady. 1967, with the reform of the liturgy, it became the feast of the presentation of the child Jesus. But we'll take a very brief look at the purification. We have, like Jesus, to be presented to the Lord. And we, therefore, like Mary, want to be purified. As the prophet Malachi told us, we have to be purified like silver and gold. And as we heard, too, in the prayer of today's Mass, may we be presented to you, Lord, with minds and hearts made pure. So let us think, therefore, of the need we have for purification. But let us dwell a little more on the presentation of the child. According to the Jewish law, the child was presented to God. But in a very real sense, the child Jesus was presented to us as our Savior. We had in the second re reading that Jesus was fully man, able to suffer as we suffered. Like us in all things, sin accepted. So Jesus, presented in the temple as a little child, is the dawn of our salvation to free us from sin, to free us for eternal happiness. So much for our Jewish inheritance. But we have to celebrate to the last little remnant of the Christmas season. When we look at Jesus in the crib, we see in him most of all the love of God. Today's feast presents Jesus to us as the light of God. Therefore, we celebrate what's called Candlemas. We have this little procession of the children carrying candles to represent you. Because Jesus is the light, the light of the world. To free the world from a darkness from spiritual death. But Jesus no longer walks around the world. You have the light, all of us have the light of Christ in us. We have to bring that light of Christ to others. That's once more what the prophet Malachi told us. He said, I am sending my messenger to prepare my way before me. We have to prepare the way for the light of Christ. We are the messengers sent by God to bring the light of Christ to others. A number of years ago, I visited an old lady on her hundredth birthday and she told me, she said, Father, I have brought 99 people to the light of Christ. I'm hoping to make this century. Now she died, I think, at 102 and please God, she did get a hundred in conversions to Christ. She was eager and willing to bring the light of Christ to others. Could we say the same, each one of us, deep into our hearts? And then more recently, speaking in a church, I said, there are many people who would become Catholics but no one ever asked them. 
After the mass, a young man came to me, said, Father, I often thought of becoming a Catholic, but no one asked me. So I said, well, I am asking you now, which I did, and he's now a Catholic. Try to be a messenger of the light of Christ. You have the light of Christ in you. Bring it and share it to others. But you know, we are so willing to spread bad news, but not good news. Good news stays in the background. About a month ago, I answered the phone in the Holy Ghost residence, spirit and house, and a lady who obviously did not recognize my voice said, Father, I want to sympathize with you on the death, on my death. She sympathized with me on my death. I said, but lady, I am still alive. But of course she heard some bad news and he wasn't even sure of it, but she wanted to spread it around. Do not spread bad news around. And most especially when it's only a rumor of bad news. On the contrary, you should be willing, all of us, should be eager and willing to spread good news, to bring the light of Christ to others. How are we to do that? We have a beautiful example in Simeon. We are told Simeon was a, an upright and devout man and led by the Holy Spirit, upright, followed the commandments, walked on the straight road. And his very example was an example to others. We too have to show our light to everyone so that they may see our good works and glorify our Lord God in heaven, upright. And he was devout, devoted to God, a person of prayer, a person willing to sacrifice himself for others. But most especially, he was led by the Holy Spirit. And that's what Christianity is about. We have to follow the Spirit of Christ, to be led by the Spirit during the whole of our life, led by the Spirit in how we think, in how we speak, in how we act, how we think we realize the joy, the happiness that should be ours through the gift of faith, through the light of Christ. We should try to share that light, that joy, that happiness with others. And then secondly, St. Paul has told us in today's epistle, that Christ frees us from fear. Why are we afraid? I think for most of us, we are afraid because we fear, are fearful of losing something we love or someone we love. And therefore, because of our attachment to these things, perhaps a little bit selfishly, 
we go through life afraid. Someone said the greatest fear is the fear of fear itself. The greatest fear is the fear of fear itself. Let us embrace our fear. Let us admit we are afraid and take that fear to Simeon as he embraces Jesus. If we embrace Jesus with our whole heart and soul and we love everything and everybody in Jesus, we will not be afraid. Our fear will disappear. As St. Paul says, Christ will free us from fear. Simeon blessed the child and was blessed in his turn. We have to bless our fellow Christians and we will be blessed in return. Now, Christ came to us as a group, as a church. We want our society as well as our individual selves to be suffused, imbibed with the light of Christ. We must not be satisfied to accept any view of things other than what is produced in the light of Christ. A refusal to accept as something normal that the CEOs of our big company, the people in charge of our banks, have huge, I'm saying monstrously large salaries, while the people who provide the money receive practically nothing. We should not accept a judicial system in which justice is not dispensed speedily, impartially, and inexpensively. And on the other hand, those who are administering the justice, judges and lawyers, receive huge wads of money. That is not what the light of Christ would like to see. And then finally, we should not accept a political establishment where truth is a stranger and corruption is taken for granted. So for all these things and for many, many more, we pray that Christ our light may change them and put into the hearts of everyone involved in all these different forms of society the love and the light he has brought to us all. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.